Okay, here we are back to lab. Now what I want to do today is do a simple experiment to try to verify the mathematical analysis of a free-falling body. Before I get started, let's take a look at the math. Okay, we'll be using some basic calculus to predict the motion of the free-falling ball. Now on the left, we have a plot of the acceleration of the ball as it falls. Now recall that a free-falling object accelerates at a constant rate. 32.2 feet per second squared. Now for calculus, the area under the acceleration curve is velocity. And the area under the velocity curve is distance. Now we're going to be determining these areas using calculus and the process of integration. Now, here's how we determine the velocity of a free-falling object. The acceleration is 32.2 feet per second squared. And that's a constant. Velocity is equal to the integral of the acceleration dt. Now, for calculus, if we have a constant, we can move it outside the integral. And since acceleration is constant, we can do the same for this equation. So velocity becomes acceleration times the integral of t to the zero, which is actually 1 dt. Now, here's a process for integrating. We'll apply that to our equation. So here's what we have. Velocity is equal to acceleration times t to the 0 plus 1 over 0 plus 1. And that becomes velocity is equal to acceleration times t to the first. And t to the first is t, so velocity is equal to acceleration times time. And that's one of the equations we'd like to have. Now, determining the distance of a falling object. Here's our equation. Distance is the area under the velocity curve, so its distance is equal to the integral of the velocity dt. Now that velocity was determined on the previous slide. So velocity is acceleration times t. Move the acceleration outside since it's constant. So distance is equal to acceleration times the integral of t dt. Now applying the same laws, we get to the equation for distance. Once we do the math, we see that distance is equal to acceleration times t squared over 2 we can rewrite that as distance is equal to one-half acceleration times t squared. So that's another useful equation. Here are two equations, but the one we're most interested in is the distance equation because we're going to drop our ball from six feet, a known distance, and we want to calculate the time it takes for that ball to fall six feet. So we apply a little bit of algebra. t squared is equal to distance divided by a one-half times acceleration. Applying a little more algebra, t squared is equal to 2 times distance divided by acceleration, or t is equal to the square root of 2 times distance divided by acceleration. Now, putting in some numbers, we have 2 times 6 feet divided by 32.2 feet per second squared. Do the math, we get t is equal to the square root of 0 0.373 seconds squared. So you'll have to take a look at the units and make sure that's correct. We take that square root, we find out that t is equal to 0 0.61 seconds. And that is the fall time of our ball over a distance of six feet. All right, let's take a quick look at my simple test setup. Now what I have is a heavy wooden ball suspended from a release mechanism. And all I need to do is pull a string to release the ball. When I release the ball, I'll take the time it takes for it to hit the ground, and that'll be my fall time. So here's the bottom part of my test setup. What I've got is my cell phone I'll use as a stopwatch timer. And I've got a light system here. So when I release the ball, I'll turn on the green light so I'll have a reference point for my watch. Now I've got a kitty litter container down here at the bottom to keep the ball from bouncing when it hits the ground. So here's a drop test. Just make sure everything works. Looks like everything's good. So now we can do the experiment. The timer's running. So let's go ahead and do the drop test. Three. Two, one, drop. Now here's the video data from the experiment. I'm just using PowerPoint and playing the video in a PowerPoint slide. And I can move the 
timing around until I just see the light illuminate. That's roughly 5.3-ish seconds. And then I'll move it to the right until the ball comes down and hits about there. And that's kind of hard to see, but about 5.9, 5.95, 9, 5.93. So if you take the difference between those two, you come out to be about 0 0.60, 0 0.62. Uh, so the data is pretty close, just looking at my cell phone camera timing system. Now here's an alternate way to get timing on this experiment. It involves counting video frames. The test data was analyzed using simple video editing software, which is available for free on the internet. Frames were counted between when the green light came on and when the ball hit the ground. The video was filmed at a rate of 30 frames per second, and the fall took approximately 50 frames. We calculate the fall time by dividing the number of frames, 50, by 30 frames per second, and that results in a fall time of 0 0.60 seconds. Now that's very close to the 0 0.61 seconds that was calculated theoretically. Now at 30 frames per second, quite a bit of image smearing can occur, and that can make it difficult to determine which start and stop frame should be used. So actually, multiple experiments should be done and results averaged. Now, if you get a higher quality webcam with a higher frame rate, you can get rid of some of this smearing issue. Okay, well, it looks like our experimental results match pretty well with our theoretical analysis. So that's pretty cool. We can use calculus and integrals to help us predict the motion of objects. All right, I hope to see you next time on LabRat Scientific.